Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNO Audiobooks. Indira Gandhi National Open University School of Continuing Education Certificate Programs Certificate in Apparel Merchandising CAPMA PHC 05 Basics of Apparel Industry and Entrepreneurship Block Minus 2 Unit 4 Apparel Retail Industry in India 4.0 Objectives Retail has been around for centuries. It is a world of selling products that make people's life comfortable and happier. As we are studying about apparel industry in detail, the knowledge of retailing becomes important. According to the Rating Division of Credit Analysis and Research Limited, August 2019, the current share of apparel in India's retail market is 10%, which is expected to demonstrate a promising growth in the coming years. Hence, in this unit we will study about the importance of retailing and after reading this unit you would be able to understand the retail scenario in India. Differentiate between organized and unorganized retail. Identify the various retail formats and visualize the growth of Indian apparel retail. 4.1 Introduction Retailing is one of the largest industries in India and one of the biggest sources of employment in the country. Although the retail industry has existed in our country for centuries, it is only in the recent past that it has witnessed such a tremendous growth. With strong fundamentals developing in the Indian economy in the liberalized environment since 1991, and due to other factors favoring the growth of apparel industry, refer Section 1.4, Unit 1, Block 1 and Section 4.5 of this unit, India has observed a major retail boom in recent years. The growth and success of Indian retail is possible due to the entry of corporates like the Piramals, Pyramid, Rahages, Shopper Stock, Globus, ITC, WLS, Tathas, Westside, and Future Group, Pantaloons. Encouraged by India's growing retail business, many multinational companies have also started making a beeline to enter into India's retail market including Ted Baker, Under Armour, and American Eagle Outfitters. According to a recent study by A.T. Kani's Global Retail Development Index, 2019, India is the top developing country for retail investment and the size of India's retail sector is expected to reach at around $1.4 trillion by 2021. Also, according to the latest report of IBEF, India Brand Equity Foundation, January 2019, India is the world's fifth largest global destination in the retail space. 4.2 Retail and Apparel Retail the term retail has originated from the French word retailer meaning sale in small quantities. Retail is the process of selling of goods or services to consumers through different channels, usually in small quantities and not for resale. Retailing is the set of marketing activities designed to provide satisfaction to the end consumers. It involves Understanding the needs of the customers Developing good assortment of merchandise Displaying the merchandise in an effective manner so that the consumers find it easy and attractive to buy. Who is a retailer? A retailer is the key player in the marketing process as he regularly interacts with the end consumer. Retailers comprise street vendors, local kirana stores, shopkeepers, supermarkets etc. A retailer is the last entity in the distribution channel. Retailers include all businesses and individuals who actively participate in the transfer of ownership of goods to the end users. A retailer usually plays the role of an intermediary who links the producers, wholesalers and other suppliers with consumers. Figure 4.1 Look at the screen for table content. Apparel Apparel is defined as clothing but the retail apparel industry not only consists of clothing, it also includes accessories and footwear for all segments of society, men, women or children. The clothing market for men and women includes active wear, casual wear, essentials, formal wear and outerwear. The children's wear market includes baby clothing, toddler clothing and both boys and girls active wear, casual wear, essentials, formal wear and outer wear. For any apparel retailer it is important to offer a good selection of merchandise in order to attract and retain customers. Keeping too less or having too many options can be confusing. Therefore, it is important to find a balance between product variety and assortment. We will study in detail about merchandise planning in Block 5 of course too. 4.3 Organized and Unorganized Retailing in India The retail industry in India is divided into two sectors, organized and unorganized. Organized retailing refers to retail setups that are owned by companies, private or government, that have the license to sell their products and are registered for sales tax, income tax, etc. Here the customer walks into the stores for buying their necessary products. 
These include hypermarkets, supermarkets, departmental stores, malls etc. and organized retailing. On the other hand, is a low-cost retailing format consisting of small and medium stores owned by an individual or family operating on a proprietary or partnership basis. Their activities are not regulated under any legal provision. Unauthorized small shops like chemists, small grocery stores, convenience stores, kirana stores, pan shops, corner shops, general stores among various other small retail outlets form the unorganized retail sector. While the unorganized sector has deep penetration into rural India, the organized sector is largely concentrated in big cities. Figure minus 4.2% share of unorganized, organized and e-retail by 2021. Look at the screen for table contents. The Indian retail sector is highly fragmented. More than 90% of the Indian retail market is controlled by unorganized retailers and only 10% is served by the organized trade players. Thus, the unorganized sector remains to be the glowing strength of Indian retail industry. It is projected that by 2021 traditional retail will hold a major share of 75%, organized retail share will reach 18% and e-commerce retail share will reach 7% of the total retail market according to the latest report of IBEF, January 2019, figure 4.2. The organized retail market in India is still at a very nascent stage and is growing at a CHER of 20-25% to per year. 4.4 Retail Formats in India Classification of Retailers Figure 4.3 Classification of Retailers Look at the screen for table contents. Retailers can be classified according to their selling processes as store-based retailers and non-store retailers. Fig.4.3 Following section describes the categories and discusses the advantages and disadvantages of various retail formats. Store-based retailers Store-based retailers operate at fixed locations. Their stores are located and designed to attract a high volume of walk-in customers. These retailers offer a wide variety of merchandise and use mass media advertising to attract customers. They typically sell merchandise for personal or household consumption. These retailers can be further classified on the basis of various parameters, figure 4.4 as follows. 1. Ownership 2. Retail Strategy Mix Figure 4.4 Store-Based Retailers Look at the screen for table contents. 1. By Ownership Stores can be divided into five categories depending on the ownership basis. Independent Stores Chain Stores Franchise Stores Lease Department Stores Consumer Cooperatives Independent Stores, these are owned by a single retailer. This retailer does not own any other store. The entry barriers for setting up an independent store are low as licensing procedures are simple and initial investment is low. Therefore, there are many new entrants, which leads to competition. Advantages Located at convenient location Retailer can decide on the store timing, product variety and pricing. Cost of setting up an independent store is low as these stores employ few people and do not carry much assortment. The owner takes all the decisions therefore it saves time. Disadvantages No exposure to modern tools and techniques for managing various retail functions. Productivity is low as retailer depends on labor-intensive methods for ordering, stock-taking, merchandising and accounting. Retailers are not able to negotiate with suppliers for better price, quantity discount etc. These retailers fail to attract customers from distant locations as they do not promote themselves in the media. They have limited number of customers from nearby location. Chain stores. These stores have two or more outlets that are commonly owned and controlled. These stores have centralized buying and merchandising system. Some examples of chain stores are listed in Table 4.1. Table 4.1 Chain Stores Category Name of the retail chain footwear Bata, Liberty Photo Film, Kodak Cards and Stationery, Archie's, Hallmark Clothing, Raymond's, Benetton Watches, Titan Food Chains, Domino's, Pizza Hut, McDonald's Consumer Durables, LG, Samsung. Look at the screen for table content dash. Advantages Chain retailers purchase in bulk at low cost from the supplier slash manufacturers. They bargain heavily with suppliers over the price, quantity discounts and reorder services. Therefore, these stores offer products at less than maximum. Retail price, MRP with many stores, spread along the geography, they can afford intensive promotion. Centralized decision-making system and use of latest technology increases the efficiency of chain stores. 
disadvantages no customization of strategies for every location in terms of price promotion and product assortment it is not possible for the top management to control the activities of each and every member in all the stores the initial cost of establishment is high franchise stores a franchise store can be defined as a store based on a contractual arrangement between a franchisor and a franchisee which allows the franchisee to conduct a given form of business under an established name and according to a given pattern of business the concept of franchising has become very popular in india figure 4.5 companies like peter england raymond mcdonalds and pizza hut etc have adopted the strategy of franchising to establish and expand them in the indian market Figure 4.5 Levi Strauss and Company franchise outlet in a Delhi mall. Look at the screen for table content. Advantages: Expansion of franchise. Franchisers are able to expand rapidly across countries and continents using the capital and resources of their franchisees. Legal considerations: The franchisor is relieved of many of the mundane duties necessary to start a new outlet, such as obtaining the necessary licenses and permits. operational considerations the need of franchisers to closely scrutinize the day to day operations of franchisees compared to directly owned outlets is greatly reduced quick start franchising offers franchisees the advantage of starting up a new business quickly based on a proven trademark and formula of doing business as opposed to having to build a new business and brand from scratch expansion of franchisee with the help of the expertise provided by the franchisers the franchisees are able to take their franchise business to that level which they wouldn't have had been able to without the expert guidance of their franchisers training franchisers often offer franchisees significant training which is not available for free to individuals starting their own business disadvantages limited pool of viable franchisees in any city or region there will be only a limited pool of people who have both the resources and the desire to set up a franchise in a certain industry control for franchisees the main disadvantage of franchising is a loss of control price starting and operating a franchise business carries expenses in choosing to adopt the standard set by the franchisor the franchisee often has no further choice as to signage shop fitting uniforms etc the franchisee may not be allowed to source less expensive alternatives conflicts the franchisor slash franchisee relationship can easily cause conflict if either side is incompetent lease department stores a department in a retail store that is rented to an outside party is called a lease department it means that a floor space within a store is rented out and it runs as a separate business this arrangement is also known as shop in shop arrangement for example lifestyle has leased out its floor space to quickies to run a coffee shop Generally department stores lease out space to players whose products will add variety to the merchandise offered by the store. Advantages. Department stores can reduce their cost by giving space on lease. Store gets regular monthly income in the form of rent. The initial cost of setting up the department store is reduced as the expense is shared between both the parties. The lease department could increase the store traffic. Disadvantages. Conflicts between lease department and the store can badly affect the image of the established store. In case of any dispute with the lease department, customer will blame the store. Lease department has to manage within the operating hours of the store. Lease department individually cannot attract traffic. In text activity minus one, visit a mall slash market slash shopping hub and list down the names of any five lease departments in a retail store. Consumer cooperative consumer cooperatives are retail operations owned and managed by its customer members this kind of format is common in food retailing in many cases consumer cooperatives are started by the residents of an area these residents believe that the existing retailers in that area are either charging too much or provide poor quality goods slash services check your progress 1 1 throw some light on the evolution of india's retail industry Two, differentiate between independent chain and franchise stores. Two, by retail strategy mix. Depending on the retail strategy mix, the retailers can be classified into two groups: food retailers, general merchandise retailers, food retailers. Food is one of the largest segments of the India's retail sector. The growing online food delivery market in the country is further fueling its growth. 
According to India Brand Equity Foundation, the Indian food and grocery market is the world's sixth largest, with retail contributing 70% of the sales. Food and grocery accounts for the largest share in revenue in India and by 2020 it is estimated to constitute more than 60% of the total revenue in the Indian retail sector, followed by the apparel segment. Food industry too is ruled by traditional retailers at present but organized retailing is also showing impressive growth with the rise of modern retailing formats. Some of the retail formats used by food retailers are as follows. Convenience stores Conventional supermarkets Food-based supermarkets Hypermarkets Convenience stores Convenience stores are relatively small stores that are located near residential areas. For the convenience of the customers, they open up for long hours on all the days of the week. They carry wide variety of products with limited assortment of merchandise. Convenience stores may not carry all the items available in the supermarket but they are very conveniently located for the customers. In these stores, traffic is less and billing is faster unlike the supermarket. Conventional supermarkets Conventional supermarkets are similar to department stores but unlike department stores, these stores focus on food and household maintenance products. These stores earn very limited revenues from the sale of non-food items. Main feature of this format is the self-service operation. Shopping cart or basket is provided to the customers to pick up whatever they want. The self-service arrangement allows the supermarket to reduce cost and provide a large volume of goods and services. Self-service also enhances impulse buying. Supermarkets provide a wide variety of merchandise with deep assortments. Some supermarkets follow everyday low price EDLP, policy. Here the goods are priced lower than the maximum retail price MRP. Food-based supermarkets A food-based supermarket is larger and more diversified than a conventional supermarket but is usually smaller than a hypermarket. The size of the store ranges from 25,000 to 50,000 square feet. The entry of supermarkets has caused a huge change in the psyche of the Indian consumer. Supermarkets have appealing surroundings, hygienic environment, and better product display along with the availability of a wide variety of brands all attracting customers away from the neighborhood Kirana stores and towards the supermarket. Nowadays supermarkets are also offering store-specific membership cards for their loyal customers. Food World, Sapka Bazaar, Food Bazaar are some of the major players in this format. Hypermarkets, a hypermarket is a blend slash mix of supermarket and a department store. They are mainly located on the outskirts of major towns and cities and operate on a very large scale. They offer products ranging from fresh groceries to clothes, jewelry, hardware, sports equipment, motor accessories, books, consumer durables, electrical equipment, computers and many others. Hypermarkets provide consumers with a combination of good prices, shopping experience and convenience, product range and quality. Indian players in this format are Big Bazaar, Hypercity, Reliance Retail etc. The size of a hypermarket ranges from 30,000 to 1 lakh square feet. These stores are designed to allow customers to have one-stop shopping experience. They have business models focusing on high-volume, low-margin sales. General Merchandise Retailers In general merchandise retailing, the strategic merchandise mix ranges from a shallow to deep assortment of goods and services. On the basis of location, merchandise, price, store atmosphere, service and promotional mix, retailers are classified into Department Stores Specialty Stores Discount Stores Department Store Department Stores are large retail outlets that offer wide variety and deep assortment of goods and services. These stores provide a one-stop shopping experience to customers. They stock a wide variety of merchandise ranging from apparel, toiletries, cosmetics, toys and jewelry to appliances and furniture. They usually sell goods at fixed prices with guarantees and allow exchanges and refunds. They operate as retail chains across the country. These stores have large layout with an environment that pulls people and makes them spend more time shopping. Department stores have knowledgeable sales staff to help the customers in shopping. These stores often provide discounts and offers to the customers. The major players with this kind of format are Shopper Stock, Westside, Pantaloons, Globus, and Lifestyle. According to the U.S. Bureau of Census, a store should satisfy the following criteria to be considered a department store. 1. A department should employ a minimum of 50 people. 2. The store should generate at least 20% of its total revenue from the sale of apparel and soft goods. Figure 4.6 Crossword Specialty Store in a Delhi Mall 
Look at the screen for table content. Specialty store. Specialty stores offer a large range of selections within a single merchandise category. They are general merchandise stores that sell limited lines of closely related products or services to select group of customers. They offer a particular product line with deep assortment to its customers. Major players in the Indian market include Planet M, Music World, Crossword, Figure 4.6, etc. These stores mostly attract customers with a predefined mindset. These stores also have strong customer loyalty programs. There has been a move towards specialty mall too. Gold Soup of Gurugram is one such example of specialty mall. Specialty store can be further classified into single line specialty store. It concentrates on one or few related product lines. Limited line specialty store. It concentrates on more than one product line at a time. Discount store. Discount store format is a type of department store which sells products at prices lower than that of other retail outlets. These stores offer a wide variety of goods, limited service, and low price. Mostly, discount stores are large in size. They purchase in bulk directly from the manufacturer at deep discounts and then pass the benefits to their customers. Walmart is the largest discount retailer in the world. In India, the major players in this format are the Loot, My Dollar Store, Max Retail, Brand Factory, Non-Store Retailers. Although non-store retailers serve the general public like the store-based retailers, but they differ in their retailing methods. Figure 4.7. Non-store retailing takes place in two ways. One, traditional. Two, non-traditional. One, traditional non-store retailers. Look at the screen for table content. Figure 4.7. Non-store retail formats. Traditional non-store retailing involves variety of retailing methods. These are discussed in the following pages. Direct marketing. The Direct Marketing Association describes direct marketing as an interactive marketing system that uses one or more advertising media to yield a measurable response and or transaction at any location. Here, the customer is informed about the product through non-personal media like TV, radio, magazine, newspaper, internet, etc. The customer places an order through telephone or mail. Advantages. The initial cost or investment for direct marketers is comparatively less than that for retailers using other retail formats. This is due to smaller inventories and absence of displays and fixtures. Prime location is not required in direct marketing. A wide geographic area is covered by direct marketers' promotional activities. This reduces the total cost of the firm. Therefore, the retailer can offer its products at a lower price than any store-based retailer. Disadvantages: Customers do not have any opportunity to see and feel the products they wish to buy. Therefore, this limits the scope in the Indian market as the Indian consumers want to see, touch, and feel the product before they purchase them. Direct selling. As per Direct Selling Association, direct selling is a method of marketing and retailing consumer goods directly to the consumer that relies neither on direct mail, product advertising, nor fixed retailing outlets. Direct selling encourages convenience shopping as well as personal touch or feel of a product. It is also known as door-to-door -door selling because the salesperson approaches customers directly to sell a product or a service. Vending machines. A vending machine involves coin or card-operated dispensing of goods. It does not require the salesperson. It facilitates round-the-clock sales. Machines are placed wherever they are most convenient for the customers. These machines are generally installed in the busy marketplaces. Retailing through vending machines is also called automatic vending. Customers use prepaid cash cards, coins, or credit cards to purchase the goods from the vending machines. Goods sold through these vending machines include soft drinks, coffee, etc. Banks use automatic vending machine called automated teller machine (ATM) to make banking more convenient for the customers. Figure 4.8 Catalog of a beauty brand. Look at the screen for table content. Catalog marketing. Catalog marketing is a form of direct marketing where the seller prepares catalogs of merchandise or products (Figure 4.8) and sells directly to the customer. The catalogs are generally in printed form but can also be distributed in the form of CDs. To avoid printing and distribution costs, catalogs are being increasingly made available online. It refers to sales made through catalogs mailed to a selected list of customers. In these catalogs, basic product and pricing information is given along with the instructions for placing an order. 
Example, Avon is a good example of a company successfully leveraging this channel to sell its range of cosmetics. Telemarketing, telemarketing is the most interactive marketing medium available. Telemarketing allows the marketer to answer questions of their prospects, address their concerns, and overcome their objections. To provide more convenience and service satisfaction to the customers, goods and services are sold through telephone contact. This method is useful for customers who want to avoid traffic congestion and parking problems. Telemarketing allows retailers to provide information on new merchandise and upcoming sale events to their customers. Telemarketing provides the marketer with immediate feedback and valuable information that can be quickly analyzed. Telemarketing is the only form of advertising that requires an immediate response. Television Home Shopping It is a medium of marketing through which retailers demonstrate a product and describe its benefits and uses. If a customer wants to purchase the product, he can order it through email or telephone. 2. Non-traditional non-store retailers A significant rise in computer literacy in India over the last decade coupled with growing popularity of the internet among literate, professionals and youth has brought about a drastic growth of online commerce in the country. E-commerce slash e-tailing, electronic retailing, also called as e-tailing or online retailing. Or internet retailing, is a retail format in which the retailers communicate with customers and offer products and services for sale over the internet, you will study in detail about. E-commerce in Unit 5, Block 2 of this course. Internet purchases have seen a remarkable increase since a decade. According to the study by Forrester Research, China is the largest market for e-commerce globally. After China, comes US and then India, which is the fastest growing market. We live in a dynamic world where there are more numbers of mobile phones than number of members in the family. From communication to bill payment, hiring a cab, bank transactions, ordering food, shopping etc., and people have started using online services. The next emerging market in retail is online retail in the Indian retail growth story. Varying lifestyles, increasing time paucity and the ease to buy stuff online has paved the way for Indian consumers to have a consumer-friendly and unperturbed online shopping experience. With such a growth of internet users and increasing mobile users, e-commerce in India is a huge emergent business. The launch of 4G services, free or reduced rate of broadband have been by and far the driving forces for increased online sales. Other than services, online retail is rapidly catching up in additional product categories, including the touch and feel experience categories such as apparel. Online stores such as Flipkart.com, Amazon.com, Mintra.com, FashionNU.com, Sovi.com etc. offer a variety of apparel, display, choice, discounts and delivery, which make it easy and convenient for consumers to shop. Retailers and brands such as Pantaloons, Shopper Stop, Fab India, Madam, etc. also manage online sales and have seen an incredible increase in the number of orders placed online. Consumers can browse as per their liking and time availability through more variety with respect to color, budget, size etc. and can simply evaluate price and quality of merchandise online. The advantage of online sales from the retailer's side is that the sales channel offers no or very low real estate costs. One can reach much larger target group who are accessible across multiple locations and no staff training are required. The audience can have a comfortable virtual experience, equivalent or better than an in-store experience and for that the most essential investment required is in software technology. M-commerce, use of mobile phones have increased so much that it is not just a device to make calls, but an important medium to fulfill all the financial needs for friends and family. Now, mobile phone technology has made another leapfrog to pave its way for a new trend called mobile commerce, and commerce, where the financial transactions are made using mobile devices. According to a report by Boston Consulting Group, there is an ample scope for m-commerce in India. At present, India has over 800 million mobile subscribers. Following are the m-commerce services available in India. Bill payments. Money transfer. Retail transactions. Movie Ticketing Travel Ticketing The above-mentioned retail formats are available in the organized and unorganized retail sector in India. There are many new formats with different combinations which are gradually experimenting in the market. 4.5 Growth of Indian Apparel Retail You have already read about the size of the India's retail market in Section 16.1. In this section let us understand how apparel has contributed to the growth of Indian retail. India is increasingly growing as a market for fashion products and there are many forces working together to bring about this growth. Some of them are described below. 
Increase in disposable income Disposable income is the amount of money that households or persons have available to spend and save after paying income. Tax and pension contributions to the government. The revenue may include employees' compensation, property income, social benefits, money earned abroad, and other incomes. Greater disposable income means more discretionary spending. New occasions with the changing trends. Today, unlike past, Indians desire to buy apparel for specific events in their day-to-day -day lives. Also, inclination to buy a newer product much before the existing one becomes outdated has increased. With more socializing opportunities, like going to a mall, playing in a sports complex, attending parties etc., men and women are buying more specific combinations of outfits. Growth in the women's segment with the changing trends, impact of westernization, quality of education provided and job opportunities, women have surely become more powerful than they were decades ago. Due to the increasing number of working women, women's apparel segment, especially the western wear and beauty products are witnessing high growth. Media such as television, magazines, celebrity fashions, and movies are playing an imperative role in promoting the sales figures. Further, due to the growing financial independence of women, their personal gratification has moved up in the wish list which has stimulated the growth of retail apparel sales. Fashion increasingly a form of self-expression increasingly, Indian consumers are embracing the idea of fashion for its own sake, as a means of self-expression, and not merely as a functional purchase. Television, movies, advertising and the internet bombard today's Indian consumer with new ideas about style. In the recent times, consumers are trying to combine styles which blend the silhouettes of the East with the comfort cut of the West. Increase of urban population In the next two decades, the number of Indians living in cities are anticipated to grow by 300 million, where they are bound to get into new styles and fashions to match new lifestyles. Also, the movement of rural population to the urban area has led to an increasing trend of nuclear families. This has further led to major changes in the lifestyle of the population. There has been a significant increase in the demand for ready-made goods and consumer-friendly services. Rise of organized retail branded and big store chains where products are systematically stocked and displayed have made the shopping experience very pleasant and satisfying. Therefore, the trend to shop from organized retail is rising. Focus towards online transactions and availability of credit options, demonetization drive in the country has promoted the use of soft form of money. The government is trying hard to increase availability of online transaction facilities over mobiles through promotions like Mira Mobile, Mira Bank. Many private players like Paytm and Quick Money are also successfully promoting mobile commerce and commerce. The availability of plastic money and credit options have enhanced the spending habit of consumers. Increasing degree of brand consciousness of the Indian consumer, with an increase in the standard of living, today's Indian is exposed to global trends and styling. They have become brand conscious and have higher aspirations. Customers increasingly expect higher quality, service and some customization. They are more and more time staffed and want more convenience. They can obtain extensive product information from the internet and other sources, which permit them to shop more intelligently. They are showing greater price sensitivity in their search for value. Changing profile of Indian consumers Changing consumer has been one of the key driving factors of the growth India is witnessing in retail. This can further be broken down to some of the factors that revolve around the consumer of today. Socio-economic factors, there is an increase in the percentage of earning population in India falling between 16 to 60. The median age of 26 years of the working population highlights it to be one of the major reasons of growth in the spending habit of the population. Young earning population is considered to have higher spending habit. Splurge of middle income group, steady growth has favorably affected the personal income in India. The middle class forms the backbone of the Indian market with the young middle class population that is fueling the growth. Building on the middle class, upper middle class and higher income class will pave positive path for demand in niche and branded products. All the reasons stated above make India too important to be ignored by the national and international players. India is all set to evolve from an increasingly important sourcing hub into one of the most attractive consumer markets in the world. 4.6 Opportunities and Challenges Retailing has witnessed such a drastic transformation over the past couple of years that its very explanation has undergone a sea change. A manufacturer no longer can rely on sales to take place by ensuring mere availability of his product. 
Today, the world of retailing is much more than simple merchandising. You see Mathur in his book on retail management said it is about casting customers in a story, reflecting their desires and aspirations, and forging long-lasting relationships. As the Indian consumer evolves they expect more and more at each and every time when they step into a store. Retail today has changed from selling a product or a service to selling a hope, an aspiration and above all an experience that a consumer would like to repeat. In different sectors, producers and service providers have immense opportunities in urban markets in capturing and delivering enhanced value to the consumers through retail. For instance, in Chennai, manufacturers-slash-service providers have combined their own manufactured products and services with those of others to generate value. Kyabnikari, Limelight, Marikoskaya Skin Clinic and Apollo Hospitals Apollo Pharmacies are examples, to name a few. Only innovative concepts and models may survive the test of time and investments. Nevertheless, the manufacturers and service providers will more and more face a host of specialist retailers, who are ahead in using modern management techniques, supported with unrestricted financial resources. Organized retail appears inevitable. For retail industry in India, the conditions have never appeared better and brighter. The manufacturers and service providers would certainly face a lot of challenges when market power shifts to organized retail. Quality control programs ensure high profitability, customer satisfaction and enhance customer experience. A retailer should understand the requirement of customers. It is not what products a retailer has to offer, but what customers want. Quality has to be integrated in the process on the basis of customer. Feedback which will enhance customer loyalty. Quality control program like Lean Six Sigma in retail can minimize errors in operation, reduce customer dissatisfaction, waste reduction etc. Ensuring the quality is yet a challenge for the Indian retailers. The unorganized retail sector lacks trained or skilled manpower, prior training of trade practices, work ethics etc. But with organized retail picking up in the country, the demand for skilled retail professionals has increased. So other than eyeing expansion, organized retailers look for skilled employees who can take up the challenges in this competitive field. As a result, retailers such as Spencer's and Bharti Walmart have set up their respective institutes Pragati and Bharti Training Center to train the manpower according to their respective needs. Check your progress. 3. 1. Differentiate between direct marketing and direct selling. 2. What are the reasons for the growth of Indian apparel retail industry? 4.7. Let us sum up. From the above unit, you have learned the concept of retail and the growth of Indian retail industry. The retail formats comprise of store-based and non-store-based. The former is further classified on the basis of ownership, strategy mix and the latter is classified as traditional and non-traditional. There are several reasons for the growth of Indian apparel retail. They are increase in disposable income, new occasions, growth in the women's segment, fashion consciousness, urbanization and organized retail among others. Retail today has a new face from selling a product or a service to selling a hope, an aspiration and above all an experience that a consumer would never forget and like to replicate. There are few challenges which the industry is facing. A retailer should Understand the requirement of customers. It is not what products a retailer has to offer, but what customers want. Quality has to be integrated in the process on the basis of customer feedback which will enhance customer loyalty. The unorganized retail sector lack trained or skilled manpower, prior training of trade practices, work ethics etc. But with organized retail picking up in the country, the demand for skilled retail professionals has increased. So other than eyeing expansion, organized retailers look for skilled employees who can take up the challenges in this competitive field. 4.8 Keywords Assortment, number of different items in a merchandise category. Here the store keeps a number of variations of single product. Assortment is referred as the depth of merchandise. Each different item of merchandise is called an SKU, stock keeping unit. Variety, it represents the number of merchandise categories a retailer offers. When a store sells groceries, clothes, electronics etc., it is the variety of products. It is defined as the collection of different products under one roof. Variety is often referred to as the breadth of the merchandise carried by a retailer. Merchandise, goods to be bought and sold. Retail, retail is the selling of goods to consumers, usually in small quantities and not for resale. Soft goods, merchandise that is soft to the touch, such as clothing and other textile good. Wholesaler, an intermediary entity in the distribution channel that buys in bulk and sells to resellers rather than to consumers. 
Thank you for watching. We will see you in next video with next chapter.